Hey, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Fundraising Business Talk. I'm Patrick Cyber. I'm an auctioneer uh, focused on benefit auctions and fundraising golf tournaments. We get together every Wednesday at noon in the Pacific time zone to uh, visit about what's the latest trends and best practices that we're seeing happening in the fundraising auction business. And today I, I, I've got a busy week in the next, I, I don't know how this happened, but in the next eight days, we're going to do five. That's right. Do five virtual events in the next eight days. And, um, I wanted to spend some time and kind of chat about each of the upcoming events today. Each have their own, uh, unique elements that I thought were uh, powerful and exciting and uh, it's been a blast. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to touch on each of those elements as we uh, as we do the show today. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, we encourage everyone, hey, you know, type in the comment box, say hello, let us know uh, your name and where you're from and uh, and of course if you have any questions please don't hesitate fire them off in the comment box. I'll be able to see them here in the studio and uh, would love to answer any questions that you may have. And so today, as we're, we're going to talk about virtual events, I wanted to uh, start today's program with a little uh, quick video that I put together a few months back uh, that I found uh, was pretty entertaining. And when I looked at it earlier uh, this week, I was really amazed at how true it still is. So let's take a look a little bit at uh, Welcome to the Virtual Event. So that uh, that's pretty entertaining. I <laughs> I laugh when I see it because I, I love that slide about uh, things you will not miss when you're doing virtual. Uh, long lines at the bar, lines at the restrooms, lines at uh, at registration, uh, getting the wrong meal, having to sell tickets and tables. Uh, there's just so many things, folks, that uh, I I hope we never go back to in a hundred percent of those challenges that we had before. And, and when we do, I'm optimistic that we'll have some new plans and evolve and create some new things. So as I shared a moment ago, I want to talk about uh, what's coming up on my docket here in the next uh, few days. Like I said, five uh, virtual events here in the next eight days that we're going to be producing. Uh, and it's, it's been a blast. You know, I'm a huge fan of Octria and uh, four, four of the five are on Octria. And we helped uh, the client set up their website and kind of manage the Octria side of the event. And so it's been fun. I've got uh, multiple bid monitors running in the background. You're probably wondering what is bid monitor, but bid monitor is a utility within the Octria system that uh, allows you to see all the activity in the system with respect to the bidding and the donating and the purchases and things of that nature. So it's, uh, I find it fun to have running in the background while I'm getting through my busy day in preparation for these events because it's, uh, it's motivating to see all the planning that went into these virtual events from the committee and from the chairperson and then to see it actually happening and people bidding 
and it's it's been a lot of fun. So uh, let's talk about uh, the first event. Uh, the first event is tonight. Uh, it will be, it is themed or called Stand Up for St. Rose. And St. Rose is a Catholic school, K-8, over in Northeast Portland. Uh, wonderful, wonderful community. We've had the opportunity and been honored to serve as their auctioneer for a few years. Uh, started out as their MC and then moved into their auctioneer role. And we've just had a wonderful time with our friends at St. Rose. Last year, their gathering event was canceled at the very last minute. They were my first cancellation. The governor of Oregon shut down the state locked us down on the 13th of March and their event was scheduled for the 14th. And, um, we, we just did what we could do. Right. And, uh, so this year with all that are going on in the school systems, uh, very challenging time for the teams and the staffs, uh, working with the students and distance learning and all those things, we decided to try a new format this spring, uh, for St. Rose. And we are doing virtual, but it's primarily a paddle raise event. And what I love about it is the theme stand up for St. Rose, which is, uh, could be taken a couple of different ways, but we're going to, we're going to put a theme of stand up comedy on it, uh, tonight. And so we've got about a 45 minute program prepared. We have been, uh, uh, collecting donations in advance through the Octria website. We have been selling a uh, wall of wine uh, through the Octria website. They had a lot of leftover wine from a year ago that, uh, that we needed to uh, move out. And so we're, uh, they, they sold it and people are picking up their wine from, from school today and going to get home and tune into the show, stand up for St. Rose, uh, seven o'clock tonight. And, uh, What's really fun about this is where this will be the first one that we've done in StreamYard. So we're using StreamYard right now. Uh, if you're not familiar with StreamYard, StreamYard is a, a virtual studio and it allows me to bring in guests. We use it for the show every week. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal web-based utility. That app that uh, allows us to host the show, we can change all the backgrounds and control all the different elements of the show. And uh, tonight, on StreamYard, I will, interestingly enough, um, I'll be sitting right where I'm sitting now in my home studio. Uh, we will have, I will be pretty much the only live talent on the show, except for our comedian, uh, good friend Alex Falcone, Portland's funniest person in 2018, and recently in the last year and a half or so, moved to Los Angeles. Uh, Alex will be joining our program tonight as our headliner in the stand-up for St. Rose event uh, all the way from Los Angeles and he'll do a 10 minute set at the end of the program tonight to keep everybody entertained. But um, so Alex will join us through StreamYard from Los Angeles. Whereas, you know, if we were doing a gathering event, Alex probably wouldn't be there because he would have to fly up and, and to be here. Uh, and so we'll, uh, because of the virtual environment, Alex is able to join us from LA. He'll be a great uh, addition to the show and, and do a wonderful performance. And then my uh, our producer tonight is Anka Trefan with Trefan Events. And Anka will be uh, producing the show all the way from Meridian, Idaho. One of my favorite places uh, is Idaho and Boise, Idaho in particular. I haven't spent a lot of time there producing uh, the Albertsons Boise Open for many years as the tournament director. Um, Anka was formerly with the AV department here locally, been in the audio visual world a lot here in the Portland market and in the last couple of years moved over to uh, Idaho with her family, her husband and family and, and uh, doing remote work there uh, all over the country. And so I'm really, really pleased that Anka was able to uh, be our producer tonight. So, but that's the flexibility and the cool element of being able to do these virtual events is we can incorporate things that we would never have incorporated in a gathering event. And I think at the end of the day, proof is in the pudding, if you will, or proof is in the bank account, as I like to say, uh, for our nonprofits because virtual works and it is raising money. So uh, tonight's event, uh, we put together some fun videos, uh, Lindsay, uh, Zogus, who is the auction coordinator, event coordinator for the school. She has uh, kids there. She's a parent. 
she did a great job of gathering a bunch of footage of uh, kids telling jokes and teachers telling jokes. Uh, Father Matt, the priest there at uh, St. Rose, has a few jokes tonight, as does Christine Penwell, the, the principal of the school. So we, we've incorporated throughout the program uh, some some humor and some plenty of faces, and uh, it'll be a really a great representation of the atmosphere in the community at St. Rose tonight. And at the same time, we'll be uh, collecting donations, and anybody can tune in. Uh, encourage you to go to StandUpForStRose.com and uh, go ahead and RSVP and tune in. You can watch the broadcast right on the homepage of Stand Up for St. Rose. And you can also make a donation if you'd like. So that'll be fantastic. And then tomorrow night, we're going with another school. Uh, we're going with a public school. This would be Raleigh Hills K-8. So Raleigh Hills is uh, not too far from the house here, ironically. But we'll be doing this one remotely, too, using StreamYard again. And uh, Raleigh Hills has... Uh, uh, was not able to do their event a year ago. They quite honestly haven't been able to do any fundraising events. They usually have a lapathon and then their annual auction. This year they were unable to do in 2020. They were able unable to do either of those, and they reached out and asked for our help and move into virtual. And so we're able to do it for them and uh, and use Streamyard. And so we're using both Octria and Streamyard for that event. Uh, you can go to rhs-auction.com and see the, the Raleigh Hills page. They've got, uh, it's a Title I school, and so it's it's pretty exciting to see what we're going to be able to generate for them. Uh, bidding opened a week ago on their live and silent packages. Everything's bid online in this format. As you've heard me say before, we recommend opening your online bidding a week in advance, and, uh, and then... Uh, we'll close those items, uh, you know, start to close our online auction packages um, about 15 minutes after the broadcast is over. So, uh, and when I say online and I say soft close, what I mean by that is we are using the bid extension software available in Octria and uh, in the auction industry, we call it anti-sniping software. And what happens is uh, all of our auction items are bid online. Uh, they have a set closing time but that closing time can be extended when a bid is received on a package within five minutes of the close. It will extend that closing time another five minutes, right? Uh, in the auction industry, we like to take bids until people are done bidding. So um, the bid extension time in the soft close format allows us to do that. So uh, plenty of great items in the Raleigh Hills K8 auction to do and to bid on and support, make a donation, all the different things. Um, but, you know, new for G events and myself in particular, uh, one of the things that we're incorporating in both broadcast uh, tomorrow night and tonight is the chat feature. Uh, I've traditionally been maybe a little resistant, if you will, uh, to utilizing chat in the virtual format. Uh, I know a lot of auctioneers are big into it and you know, everybody has their own opinions. Uh, I've found, especially early on, that I was concerned with um, the the user experience and the and the audience experience. That we are we are there to raise money that night, and I need you to be able to watch what we're talking about on the stream. But then I also wanted you to be able to bid. I'm a huge proponent of the two device world, so that you're able to. Uh, watch what's going on on your on the stream and see the program and see the videos and incorporate and learn about the community. But also, I like um, you to be able to bid right on your cell phone. And uh, that way you can watch the stream, whether it's on a computer monitor or um, uh, cast it over to your smart television, plug your smart television in, or even use the web browser on your smart TV to get to the website. You know, when you're using Octree, it's very easy to do all those things. Uh, and then you've got the second device. So my concern with um, my concern with utilizing chat was I think it's a great opportunity to engage the audience and have the audience communicating. But I'm have always been concerned that you lose. Um, you lose the um, 
connection with the fundraising element, right? And uh, uh, so I've been concerned because I thought, well, that's a third device, right? Uh, they have to share that bidding device to be able to chat, or do they have three monitors and try, you know, it, it just, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. And I know there's a lot of auctioneers who have been a big advocate of it. And I think that's fantastic if it works for them and their clients. Uh, in fact, there's, there's an auctioneer out of the Bay Area, Chad Carvey, very well respected benefit auctioneer. Chad does all his bidding and takes all his bidding and donations right in the chat window. And I, I think that's a fascinating concept, doesn't even need auction software. He takes it right in the in the bidding uh, window is the chat window. So, you know, everybody's different, but I'm excited. The reason, the reason that I liked the concept of adding chat to tonight's event and tomorrow nights, and I think we're, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We may add it to uh, next week's two events also, is that because we're using StreamYard, I'm able to, when make people make comments, I'm able to gab, grab them and put them on the screen, just like this one here. Our good friend, Tim Stewart, here he is, always uh, tuning in. Uh, thank you, Tim, for joining us again, as always. Appreciate it. And uh, I'm anxious to see how that house goes in Northern California. You got on the market, you're going to be selling using the auction method. I think it's April 25th. I'm shooting from memory here, but... Uh, Tim is a very accomplished auctioneer, uh, does benefits, does really focuses his time on real estate uh, today and is, and is just doing a bang up job for his clients in the real estate industry. And uh, it's, it's always great to have you tune in. But my point in using the chat is, is that tonight and tomorrow night when folks make a comment, we'll solicit comments, we'll, you know, we'll encourage them to make a comment, we'll encourage them to, 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 uh, uh, cheer on our comedians, if you will, in the stand up for St. Rose, we'll encourage them to thank the people that are donating. Right. Uh, and when they do, and they use that chat window, I can bring them right into the broadcast, just like I did with Tim and I control that. So, you know, uh, we can cherry pick, if you will, um, things that, that we think would be positive to add to the live stream event. And so I'm excited to see how it works. Uh, that's uh, something we haven't done in the past. And, and what really motivated me to do it was that uh, I started doing these kickoff shows um, when the bidding opens for an event, right? So we talk about the virtual environment and we talk about we do online bidding and we started a week before the live stream main event, okay? And uh, one of the things that I started incorporating late last fall, and we've done it, I, I believe, on just about every one of the events this spring, is we have a kickoff show. So today, right after this, actually at two o'clock, uh, we're doing a kickoff show for one of our events for next week because their bidding opened today. And so what we do in that kickoff show is we stream it to their social media site. Now that's interesting, right? Like right now we're streaming to the social media sites. Uh, we're, we're going to all of G events sites. We're going to our Facebook, uh, our Twitter account, and our YouTube account all simultaneously, right? So with these kickoff events, um, I'm real big on us broadcasting that kickoff event through the group or the nonprofit's Facebook page, right? Because most of these organizations have a tremendous following on their Facebook page. And so we will run this hour, 45 minute to an hour program, and we walk everybody through how to participate in the auction, how to participate in auction week, whether it's make a donation, whether it's how to bid, we explain soft close, we explain proxy bidding, uh, we highlight some auction items, we highlight uh, our raffles. Interestingly enough, we've had a couple of events when we did the kickoff, we ended up selling out their raffle because we were pushing it so hard on that, that opening day, right? So that's fantastic. But last week when we did the kickoff for Raleigh Hills, I said, let's, let's engage the chat and see what happens. And in about a 30 to 45 minute kickoff show, we received, I want to say it was over 90 comments. So um, 90, 90 comments in the chat box. And so it was, it was I wouldn't say eye-opening to me, but I was enthusiastic about it because it meant the community was engaged, right? And so... I, I love the concept, and because we were using StreamYard this week uh, for these two events and then two events next week, I said, let's try that. When we're in the studio, it's a little more challenging 
for me to see when I'm in the studio, like at the AV department or somewhere else, uh, which shout out to our friends at the AV department. They're the, the hands down where I, if I have a choice, that's where I'm headed um, for doing these events because so turnkey quality, quality equipment and even higher quality individuals uh, turning the knobs there at the AV department. But uh, it's, it's, it's a little awkward. I've already got several monitors in front of me for a virtual uh, in that studio. And, uh, but tonight when I'm on StreamYard, I think it's gonna be pretty cool uh, just to grab a comment or two and throw them in the chat box and use that as uh, material for us to uh, communicate with the audience to give some shout outs and some thank yous and all that type of stuff. So uh, I, think it's, I think it's got a lot of potential and, and I'm excited to see what happens. Now, I mentioned a little bit about Raleigh Hills, elementary tomorrow night uh they've got a you know we've basically made a traditional event that they they used to have uh at a venue and we've moved it to virtual and you know what's fascinating to me and i i, I I'm, I'm gonna look at bid monitor right now while we're talking because i want to get my facts straight right but one of the things that i love is we have been following this concept of starting our bidding at $10, right? So every item in the online auction uh, starts at $10. Shocking, huh? Um, you've heard me talk about this before. This is something that's been done in the online auction industry uh, for 20 some odd years, selling antiques and collectibles and personal property, uh, even real estate. We had, uh, we had Barrett Bray on the show here several weeks back. Uh, who does a lot of real estate at auction, just like Tim does. And uh, he talked about starting a house at $1, okay? And when it closed 10 days later, it sold for $1.35 million uh, down in Oklahoma. So fascinating stuff, right? And, and when I thought about how this new virtual environment and the online bidding more closely resembles um, the traditional online bidding, in online auction world, it made sense to me. So interestingly enough, we have, uh, we're incorporating that on, on just about every event we do now. Sometimes it's, it's a bit of a uh, stretch for folks to embrace, uh, which is okay, nothing wrong with that. But uh, this event tomorrow night, they are almost at 100% of their value, okay? Um, so in other words, in the industry, I'm always sensitive to looking at what is the total value of the items that we have for auction? What's their fair market value? We add that number up and that gives me kind of like what our fair market value of the inventory is. And then I look at the revenue we generate from that uh, inventory during the event, okay? And so you'll hear me say pretty regularly, what percentage of fair market value did you get on your auction packages, okay? And uh, you know, within our industry, uh, amongst benefit auctioneer specialist, auction specialist, uh, we find that an average, an average silent auction in the gathering environment did about fifty percent. That was that was just an average on an average silent auction, you know, with bid sheets and things of that nature. And um, if you had a pretty good silent auction, we w w really good. You you figured that it was going to be somewhere around seventy uh, percent. OK, and so far, when we have started these the bidding at ten dollars or even a dollar, we did with an event a couple of weeks ago, uh, we have seen routinely 80 to 90 percent of value achieved in their online auction, which to me, pretty exciting stuff, uh, pretty exciting stuff to see that happening. And the group that we're doing tomorrow night, Raleigh Hills, they've they're already over 90 percent. Uh, to fair market value, which is um, uh, an incredible result, right? And that's before we, we start taking bids live and we have everybody gathered on the live stream. So phenomenal stuff. Definitely, definitely reach out if you got some questions about how that works, starting things at $10, what you do with the increments. You know, one of the things that I, I did with this event, and I think it's going to become a best practice and I recommend it, is... We started everything at $10. 
with $10 increments. So that means, you know, somebody bids 10, then they bid 20, then 30, right? What I was sensitive to is if we've got, like we have a vacation house in the package, in one of the packages tomorrow night, you know, starting at $10 is great, but when it gets, uh, we would anticipate that that package might sell for, let's say $1,500. Well, to go from 1410 to 1420, doesn't really reflect what we would do in the auction industry, right? So uh, a lot of times I would start something low in a live auction environment and I would take, uh, we call it clips. Uh, maybe I'd go in $50 or $100 clips to begin with. But as we got up to those higher levels, uh, then I would kick it to $250, maybe to a $500, maybe to $1,000 uh, per next bid. So that's what I'm talking about when I say bid increments. And um, for for this new environment where we're starting online bidding at $10, what I'm looking at is when it reaches $100, when the current bid reaches $100, I kicked that bid increment to $25. So now it goes from, it went from 90 to 100 to 125, okay? And then when we get to 500, I wanna kick it in $50 increments, right? So now we're at five, or we're at 475, now 500, now five and a half, now six, now six and a half. When we get to a thousand, that's where we kick it to hundred dollar increments. We go, uh, you know, we'll go at uh, nine fifty to a thousand. Now eleven hundred. Now twelve. Now twelve. Now twelve hundred. That'll be net twelve. Gosh, I miss saying that out loud. Anyhow, uh, and that's the format I've been using. It makes it, you know, once again, our friends at Octria with a bid monitor have made it very easy for me to kind of keep an eye on that and make those changes in real time. And, uh, and so it's been fabulous to watch, but that event tomorrow night is already well into, uh, the 90% range of fair market value. And so I'll be anxious to see where we end up. We'll talk about it next week if we want. Right. So, uh, that will be cool. And then, uh, Saturday night, we're, uh, we're with our good friends at Central Catholic doing the president's dinner and auction. Uh, that will be a uh, virtual event also. Uh, get, get to work with our friends at Portland Productions. They have a wonderful facility and, and do very high-end professional uh, production work. Um, uh, Devon and her husband, John, uh, are great to work with. And the team at Central, Sarah Wright and everybody involved, uh, with the Central Catholic event, do a fabulous, fabulous job. Uh, their online bidding is has been up for, I want to say, maybe a couple of weeks. Um, they have a very large online auction. And so one of the things that we recommended to them a year ago was to kind of roll out uh, that auction over a course of a couple of weeks. And then uh, I believe they've extended the closing time on that event till after the event, like two or three days. So uh, that is something I have seen done here in the Portland market. Um, uh, there's several auctioneers who who support that uh, philosophy. This is the first time uh, that I've had one of my clients do it. So I'm looking forward to see what kind of results they get and what the activity is like uh, after, after the live stream on Saturday night. Uh, and I did say Saturday night. That's another element that's unique about this event. Um, and, you know, of all the events that I've done to this point in the virtual world, um, which is over 20 some odd, and will be, you know, I already said five virtuals in the next eight days. The, the, uh, the thing that we've done is we've moved them off of weekends, right? That we didn't feel like folks would, um, in this new COVID era and, uh, working at home and Zoom calls all day. We feel like a lot of people, when it comes to the weekend, they want to turn off, right? Uh, they want to turn those electronics off. They want to be with their family. They want to hop in the car. They want to go camping. They want to go uh, in our market to Central Oregon, over to the Oregon coast. Um, the last thing that they tend to want to do is turn into a Zoom or a uh, live stream on Saturday night. And so we've seen a lot of success with that. At the same time, Central has such an incredible following of individuals and people and families that, uh, you know, it doesn't doesn't affect their event uh, the least a bit to be on Saturday night. And so we look forward to doing it. The other the other one that the element that's unique about tomorrow night's event or Saturday night's event uh, with Central Catholic is that they are streamed on Twitch. 
right? And you don't hear that very often in our business. Uh, most folks are streaming through Vimeo uh, or they're streaming through uh, YouTube Live. Um, you know, I, I probably tend to prefer uh, Vimeo just because I've, I've found it to be very, you know, solid and I've also found it to be great uh, afterwards to download the video and share it. I have a, I have a channel on my Vimeo uh, page of all the virtuals that I've done. So if you haven't been there, you know, um, stop by uh, at G Events LLC, I think it is in Vimeo and you can see uh, an example of 20 some odd virtual events that we've been involved in. But uh, uh, Twitch, as I was saying, was primarily designed, it's, it's an Amazon product, but it was designed as, uh, I believe it's an Amazon product, I could be wrong on that. Uh, so don't hold me to that one. But it has the largest number of servers. It was originally designed for gamers. Uh, a lot of folks use it for podcasting and uh, streaming, live shows, that type of stuff. Uh, but it's not as what I would consider mainstream with my age demographic uh, to use Twitch. I know my boys are, are Twitchers and they're all over Twitch playing their uh, Mortal Kombat and their, you know, whatever else games there are, Halo. And I, yeah, I never can remember them all. But uh, but we're streaming on Twitch. And, and part of the reason that we are tomorrow or Saturday is that John's a huge um, uh, fan of Twitch from the stability and the amount of servers that are backing that up. So, yeah, it's great. And it works for them. And it works for me. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun to be with our friends at Central Catholic Saturday night. Uh, always great to see Monsignor Henry and, and President of School Colin. Uh, great guy. And a couple of shout outs to my buddy, Mike Pender, who works over there now, too. And uh, so fun group, fun group. And that's Saturday night. And then next week, uh, we have two events. We're doing both of them on StreamYard. So it's a, uh, it's a couple of weeks to, to uh, really put to test the StreamYard format in, in the fundraising virtual events. Uh, next week, we have Riviera Christian School down in Salem. We'll be at West Hills uh, Community Church where the school is housed. And uh, my associate, uh, Jessica Sparks, will be doing her first virtual event uh, down there for Riviera. And uh, that will be streamed on, on a YouTube uh, channel that the church uses and the school uses. And so that'll be easy. It's an Octria event, uh, having a lot of fun. And then uh, Thursday, we'll be doing Springwater Environmental Sciences School. Springwater is out uh, in Clackamas County, really a unique charter school environment, do great, great work, uh, really incorporate community with the families and the students and uh, a lot of outdoors work and, uh, you know, they just got a phenomenal, phenomenal place at Springwater. And, and so I'm looking forward to, uh, to doing that event with Greg, their principal will be my MC that night. And, uh, we're going to raise a lot of money for a really special school. There's a, there's a group again, Springwater who had to, uh, postpone their event last year as did Riviera. And so, um, it was uh, a bit of a jump. You know, nobody knew how long this pandemic was going to take and influence us. And so they told chose to postpone for a year. But a year later, here we are still in it. And so we're going virtual and it'll be a lot of fun uh, to work with both groups. And uh, we're going down to Salem to see that event on uh, Wednesday with Riviera. In fact, we're doing their kickoff show here at two o'clock today. And then we'll do Springwater's kickoff show tomorrow. So uh, lots of fun events. If you are, you know, want to see what these events look like and how they work, you know, uh, now's the time. I've actually created a little ticker down there for you that uh, shows uh, the websites of each of those events. And you can go to, to those. And uh, once you're at those uh, Octria sites, Central's is a greater giving event, but uh, the other ones, uh, you'll be able to click right on there and see not only all the auction items and raffles and different things that they're doing, but you'll also be able to watch the live stream right on that. And it, it's central as they've got it set up going through the Twitch account. So uh, really easy to collect, connect to their event. Also, uh, I'm looking forward to being with our buddy Rhonda from K2 
and uh, Rhonda has a child at Central Catholic uh, now. And so we did the event together last year. It was a lot of fun being with Rhonda. She's awesome. And so we're, uh, we got a rehearsal tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, rehearsal, afternoon, kickoff show, tomorrow night, live stream for Raleigh Hills, Catholic, or Raleigh Hills K-8. So going to be a busy, busy week, but lots of fun stuff happening. Lots of positive things going on, raising a lot of money. Uh, we continue to see. The last thing I want to touch on is uh, what's happening in the future. Uh, we're having a lot of conversations as people um, get vaccinated, as, as people are optimistic that we're going to be able to, to gather again shortly. Um, you know, what's that new format look like? And my advice at this point is um, start with virtual and add an audience. Um, virtuals don't get canceled. You know, uh, I don't think any of us, when the governor shut down the state of Oregon back in, in March, um, you know, it was for two weeks and then it turned out uh, we're still not to full capacity over a year later, right? Not throwing any blame, not making any statements of that. I'm just saying life happens, right? And at the end of the day, I haven't found a nonprofit yet that doesn't need the support from these events. And so the, the only way to guarantee that is to guarantee virtual. And then as you get closer to that event, can you add an in-person component, right? Um, can you uh, move the production from a studio or from StreamYard to a gathering environment, uh, to a venue? And can you, how many people can you have? And what does that format look like? And you, you know, my concern is, is that Un, not unlike the fact that we're going to be doing business differently after this pandemic uh, than we did before. Um, we're going to be continue to do a lot of Zoom meetings. We're not going to be, I'm not going to be driving across the city of Portland for a 30 minute meeting. It's just not going to happen anymore. Right. And I think the same thing is, is going to happen with our gathering events and that, um, we, we still have a lot of people that want to get together and have a big party and, and a fundraiser. And absolutely, I can't wait to stand in front of a crowd and call bids. Uh, just, I, I love that. That's why I got in the business. Uh, can't wait to do it. If you told me I could go do it tomorrow, I'd, I'd do it in a heartbeat, right? But at the same time, I think a lot of our audience might say, hey, you know what? That Saturday night deal where I used to you know, get dressed up, start getting ready at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon so I could be there by 5, 5.30 uh, for a you know, social hour and an and a online, you know, a, a silent auction. And then I was going to move in, sit down at a t table with two, 300 other people and have a dinner and listen to speeches. And then they were going to have an auction and a paddle raise. And I was going to leave there about 9.30, right? And I was going to race home and, you know, do whatever I had to do. Right. So I think there's going to be some people that just don't feel comfortable doing that. And so I think you, you, you need to have a virtual environment for them. And that virtual environment could be nothing more than online bidding um, for all your packages. Maybe maybe we go back to a silent and a live package concept and and people who want to participate in the uh, live auction need to be in attendance uh, at the same time. There's a way that we can stream that event and we can have simulcast bidding, which is something that's been done in the commercial side of the auction industry for, as I said earlier, 20, 25 years. And what I mean when I say simulcast, for those who are wondering, what does that mean? When we're using an online platform like Octria, we could have an audience full of people and we could have an audience out on the internet and they could be bidding online and those folks in the room in the space with us could raise their paddles just like we 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 have in the past and we they bid against each other right and i think the easiest way to execute that for folks who are saying well how do you do that i mean how do the people online know that they're bidding and you know how do how do how do they know what's going on well if we live stream right that's one way they can hear they can see the other thing is is that we assign one of our auction team um, to be an online bidder and they're bidding for the house. In other words, they're bidding for the venue. We call that a floor bidder in the industry. And so we would take somebody on our team and we would make them the floor bidder. And what they would do is sit at their computer 
uh, and they would watch the online bidding and I would be on stage calling bids just like I normally would. And what would happen is, is when the bid online was higher than the bid in the room, that staff member would raise a bid paddle, right? Maybe it has a unique color. Maybe it has a unique name. I'll know because I recognize them, right? And then I will take the next increment and assign it to online. And then if somebody bids in the room, then my floor bidder will hit bid at that amount, right? So that uh, everybody online sees that someone has bid the next increment. It might sound something like this. We're at five hundred dollars online now. Six now six hundred dollar bid now six now six now six hundred dollar bid now six. I'm bid six hundred in the house now seven and seven hundred dollar bid now seven now seven now seven's in house and now eight eight hundred dollars eight hundred dollar to eight hundred dollar bid eight hundred dollar to bid eight hundred. I got eight hundred online and need to be at nine and nine hundred dollar bid now nine 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 in the house nine is in the room with us here at nine hundred dollars. Our online bidders need to go to a thousand and now a thousand one thousand dollar bid now one now one now one. So it'll go like that. And then when we sell it uh, from a logistic standpoint, because most of the folks who, who watch this video or watch the show are event planners or organizers. When we sell it, um, if it if it got sold online, then that bidder number is already recorded as part of the software. All good. If it got sold in the house, then we just go back and record that bidder. Uh, number I sold it to bidder number one two three at a thousand dollars right here in the house at a thousand dollars bidder number one two three, so my clerk would write down one two three and then we'd go into the software and reassign that winning bid because the winning bid would have been initially with the floor bidder right now we're going to take it and replace it with the winning bidder number of in that case example one two three so. Um, Lots of fun stuff coming up in this uh, in in our world of fundraising auctions, and that's you know, folks, that's why we have the show every week, right? Fundraising auction, uh, fundraising bidness talk is live Wednesdays at noon Pacific Standard Time. I want to thank everybody that joined in today, and uh, you know, if you like the program, give it the old hashtag fundraising bidness talk. And uh, I want to remind you, we'll be back on the air next week, and when we are. Uh, very important to always remember, it does not matter where you start bidding. It's all about where you finish. And thanks for joining. We're going to have a busy week. Hope to see you out there or see you online. Have a great day, everybody.